numbered right here. Good. So I'm going to call the October 19th, 2020 regular council meeting to order and begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Cape Fee, Kwantlen, uh, Maskwee, and Semiami First Nations. I'm Mayor Val Vandenbroek, and with me today I have Councillor members, uh, Councillor Rudy Starbu, Councillor Rosemary Wallace, Councillor Gail Martin, uh, Councillor Nathan Pahal, and Councillor Paul Albrecht. And for staff this afternoon with us, we have Darren White, our Director of Corporate Services, Kelly Kenny, our Corporate Officer, Francis Chung, our Chief Administrative Officer, Carl Johansson, our Director of Development Services, Rick Baumhoff, our Director of Engineering, Parks and Environment, and Kim Hilton, our Director of Recreation, Culture and Community Services. So we are gonna start off with the adoption of the October 19th, 2020 regular agenda that the October 20 or 19th, 2020 agenda be adopted as circulated. Councillor Wallace, Councillor Stortaboom, any changes or additions to the agenda today? I'm just gonna check. I don't see any. Okay, all those in favor, any opposed, that carries. Moving on to the adoption of the minutes, regular meeting minutes from October 5th, 2020, that the minutes of the regular meeting held on October 5th, 2020 be adopted as circulated. Any corrections on that? Okay, I need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Stortaboom, seconder. Councillor Martin, great, thank you. All those in favor, any opposed, that carries. On to the minutes from the public hearing on October 5th, 2020, that the minutes of the public hearing held on October 5th, 2020 be adopted as circulated. Any corrections on that as well? Mover and a seconder, Councillor Martin, Councillor Stortaboom. Okay, call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. And the minutes from the special pre-closed meeting minutes from October 7th, 2020, that the minutes of the special pre-closed meeting held on October 7th, 2020 be adopted as circulated. Is there any corrections on that? Councillor Wallace, Councillor Stortaboom, anything else? All those in favor, any opposed? That carries. Okay, so Mayor's Report, upcoming meetings. The next regular council meeting will be November 2nd, 2020 at 3 p.m. remotely. And the following one after that, the regular council meeting would be November 23rd, 2020 at 3 p.m. And first up on the Mayor's Report, we have uh, the Recreation Update with Kim Hilton, our Director of Recreation, Culture, and Community Services. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm just going to share my screen here so I can show the audience our great stuff. There we go. So this is our update for Recreation, Culture, and Community Services for October. Um, just a reminder that our Cookie Monster program is running. It's for uh, preschoolers ages three to five. We have um, classes running Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's a play-based program and it runs in the morning from 9 to 11.30 a.m. or in the afternoon from 12.30 to 3 p.m. There's still room in those two classes. Our four-year-old classes are full at this time. So if you're interested in enrolling your preschooler in the Cookie Monster program, please phone 604-514-2865. Our staff at Douglas Rec Center will be happy to help you in the registration process. And we have our indoor fitness classes are continuing and I have to say uh, quite often they are becoming full now so that is exciting and people are interested in, in staying healthy and fit, but we have a wide selection of classes that people can register for, but it is no longer drop in so people do need to pre register for the classes, and you can do that online at langleycity.ca or you can phone 604-514-2940 and one of our front desk staff would be happy to help you. The weight room is also open. Uh, it's open for 90 minute sessions each day. So uh, we start at six o'clock in the morning, six to 7.30 and then we have an eight to 9.30 and so on throughout the day. And again, like the fitness classes, uh, this is by pre-registration only, you can't drop in. And you can see you can register online, langleycity.ca, or again, the phone number to phone is 604-514-2940. We, I should say, we have opened up 
our 10, 20 passes and our one month pass. So uh, providing some more opportunities for affordable recreation for our citizens in Langley City. We've also started just after Thanksgiving. So last week on Tuesday, started running some of our gymnasium programs. You'll see people in the gym with our COVID-19 protocols playing pickleball, basketball, volleyball, and badminton. Table tennis will be offered at Douglas Recreation Center once our bathroom renovations are complete. So hopefully by the end of next week, we'll be offering the table tennis over there. And again, pre-registration is required and you can phone 604-514-2865 or 604-514-2940. And again, the staff can assist you. Just want to give a heads up that uh, due to the pandemic that we are experiencing, we are not going to be holding our traditional public ceremony for Remembrance Day. However, we are um, in place of our traditional uh, ceremony, we are uh, videotaping one and it'll be pre-recorded and we'll be releasing it on November 11th for the community to enjoy. So uh, please stay tuned. We'll be promoting the link to that uh, once we have finished the recording. And then just a reminder to stay active, but stay safe. Keep your social distancing, but keep active. I'm happy to answer any questions anyone might have. Great, thank you, Ms. Hilton. That's uh, fantastic as always, you and your staff. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Pahal. Uh, thank you, Mayor Galt Vandenbroek um, to Ms. Hilton. It's great to see that we're doing the um, Remembrance Day ceremony online. Is there going to be an opportunity for people if they'd like to um, purchase a wreath and lay it, or how does that work? It'll be a closed ceremony with a limited wreath laying. If anything expands beyond that, uh, we will put it on our website so people uh, will be able to see. Um, I believe, you know, at any time people are, would be able to lay a wreath on their own, but just not part of the official ceremony. Okay. Uh, and are they available for purchase this year? Yes, I do believe the Cloverdale Legion is selling wreaths again, and we will get that information up on our website if it isn't already. Uh, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Councillor Stortebim. Uh Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, uh, Ms. Hilton, for your report. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to see these programs opening up, and I want to commend you and your staff for uh, taking these uh, extra precautions for uh, that public uh, safety uh, during these exceptional times. And uh, I, uh, I guess I'm wondering if we are on track with our neighbors. Is this the general consensus for municipalities in our region to be opening up in keeping with our timeline? Are we ahead of others? Are we um, at par for the course? It's, it's tough to say. So when things like this, these challenges come to us, we try to look at what everybody else is doing. Is that where we're at, where we're, you know, being careful, but not necessarily over exceeding or being too shy? Could you advise? Thank you, Councillor Storderbrim, through the mayor. Uh, yes, we, we do have a great resource in our British Columbia Parks and Recreation Association, and we have uh, bi-weekly meetings to find out where everybody's at with their reopening. And certainly uh, Langley City is not lagging behind. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that we are leading the charge either. I think we're taking a, a balanced approach to our reopening plans. And certainly if we look around our neighboring communities, everyone's a little bit different in what, in what they're offering. Um, certainly the township isn't quite where we're at yet and I don't know if they're gonna get there, but um, everyone has to work within their COVID-19 uh, guidelines and uh, where, where people, staff, mayor and council and the public are comfortable um, participating. So uh, we are certainly up with the bulk of the municipalities in the lower mainland for sure. And even within the province, I can't speak beyond the province though. No, no, that's fine. I, I really appreciate uh, your report. And, and uh, again, my compliments to you and your staff for the tremendous job that you're doing during these exceptional times. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Thank Mayor. You. Great. Thank you. Anybody else? Any other questions for Ms. Hilton? Doesn't look like it. So thank you very much. Okay, so moving right along, we now have, I believe, Councillor Albrecht with um, Discover Langley City update. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And um, 
Yeah, just before I get into the report, I just wanted to uh, to say I was fortunate enough, uh, as other members of council, uh, to take in the virtual uh, DLBA and DLC AGM uh, this past Thursday. And I found that the DC DLC presentation was uh, extremely informative and impressive. Um, I have to say that uh, Christina Gervais has done an incredible job of growing local tourism and making Langley City relevant for tourists, visitors, and residents. I want to give a big hats off and kudos to uh, Christina. And the new uh, video vignette uh, was outstanding, and it I found that it really made my senses come alive and, and mouth-watering to a, a significant degree. So on to the report. Um, fall is a time when the DLC starts building the tactical plan for the next year or the coming year. It's a time for communicating with colleagues in the destination marketing world and discuss collaborative programs that align with provincial marketing strategies and tactics. It's a time of uncertainty, but the industry is fairly confident that this is our new normal for the foreseeable future and we need to plan for at least another year of COVID restrictions. For Discover Langley City, that means focusing on our best assets and working with stakeholders to find what is working for them to draw visitors to our community. This means conversations and relationship building so that Langley City has a strong tourism voice to guide the future marketing efforts and ensure the best possible economic outcomes for our partners. The DLC has been preparing for the 2020 uh, annual general meeting and uh, share with the members, stakeholders, all the great work that has been done on their behalf for the past year and a half. Um, and again, that was a virtual uh, AGM. So uh, Destination BC provides uh, support via regular meetings for Vancouver, Coast and Mountains Destination Marketing Organization. Uh, this is an excellent opportunity to connect with the community DMOs and work together for recovery of the tourism industry as a whole. At this session, an introduction was made for a new interim CEO of Destination BC, Richard Porges. Uh, the former CEO, Marsha Walden, has moved on to lead Destination Canada, which is good news for BC. Uh, marketing, um, Langley City Cycles. Explore Langley City in a different way on wheels. The new Langley City Cycles bike trail maps take you throughout Langley City's outdoor spaces, trails, and downtown one way. Add a pop of color to your ride by following the mural walk to uncover hand-painted murals around every corner. So there are four maps to choose, uh, featuring routes that are three kilometers, five kilometers, and 10 kilometers, and all routes are on one map. Uh, the cycle routes are being promoted via social media and digital marketing and can be found on the website. Uh, another uh, feature is Collab uh, Brew and Farm Country Brewing. Discover Langley City was invited to collaborate on a new brew with Farm Country Brewing and a KPU Brew Lab. Together, the group created the Higher Learning Red uh, Station. Uh, the Higher Learning uh, Red Station is a, available starting today at 473 milliliter cans and on top of the Farm Country Brewing tasting room. This is a very unique way to promote Langley City Brewing and the DLC. Uh, it is interesting to note that Destination PC just did a similar campaign with the BC Ale Trail proving yet again that DLC is on the forefront of innovative marketing. Our consumer newsletter uh, features autumn activities such as secondhand shopping, rainy day coffee shops, and crafting workshops. Uh, the stakeholder spotlight was on sports replay that offer something unique to the lower mainland, uh, e-bike rentals. And these bikes are easy to ride and tied perfectly with the launch of the new Langley City Cycles promotion. The newsletter was sent to 191 people with a 41% open rate and 9% click rate through. These numbers show that the writing is compelling and relevant to DLC customers and stakeholders. Uh, email marketing, the average email route uh, rate open uh, should be between 15 and 25 percent. The average click rate through should be about two and a half. So we're well above those numbers. Uh, video production. Uh, DLC has completed the next video in the series of showcasing Langley City. Uh, it's fun, it's cheeky, and very features restaurants with a flyer, bartending, twirling spaghetti, flames, and messy cupcakes. 
uh, this video has been released and uh, it can be seen uh, at a YouTube channel and on the website. Uh, Google Business, uh, the DLC Google Business page is updated and new images and video are added on a regular basis. It's interesting to note that this was updated just a few weeks ago and already the images have been viewed almost 400 times. This confirms how important it is for DLC stakeholders to claim their Google businesses and DLC staff are working with stakeholders to claim their own listings. Uh, continue to grow and attract uh, digital formatting. And I have a bunch of numbers here for social media, but uh, I can pass those on at another time. And that is my report. Thank you. Great, thanks, Councillor Albrecht. Yeah, the numbers that Christine gave us, are, they're fantastic. She's doing a great job. Well, they all are. So, um, Councillor Stortaboom, I, I see your hand up. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor, for your uh, report. Uh, I just wanted to say I was privileged to attend the annual general meeting virtually for the Downtown Langley Business Association and Discover Langley City, and I was just blown away by all of the initiatives and the programs, uh, the marketing strategies, uh, that this group is doing to promote our downtown core. And it's pretty much under the radar considering you know our situation, our new reality. So uh, I just wanted to encourage those who would to uh, check out the uh, Merchants Association website and uh, discover Langley City. I think there's a, a lot of uh, very exciting initiatives and programs that uh, individuals can key into and um, the new video is uh, tremendous. So thank you again for your report and for the privilege of being able to give these folks a pat on the back. I wish Councillor James was uh, with us so uh, I could virtually tell her in virtual person. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Uh, anyone else? All right, I'm just checking the... Oh, my participants list has totally changed, but... Um, I think that's because where we're moving to, Kelly. Um, okay, so we got nothing else on that. Thank you, Councillor Albrecht. I don't see anybody else with any questions. Okay, so moving on to bylaws. Um, we First up, we have bylaw 3131, discharge of land use contract 23-73, bylaw 2020, number 3131. Third and final reading of a bylaw to authorize the discharge of land use contract number 23-73 from the property located at 20093 44th Avenue. Motion is that the bylaw cited as the discharge of land use contract number 23-73 bylaw 2020 number 3131 be read a third and final time. Any discussion on that? Was that a mover and a seconder? And then Councillor Sturdivant, did you have a comment? Okay, so I have Councillor Sturman and Councillor Pahal as a mover and a seconder. Any other further discussion on that before I call the vote? We had some pretty good discussion about this already. So I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. On to bylaw 3136, 2021 permissive tax exemption bylaw. Final reading of a bylaw to exempt certain lands and improvements from municipal taxation for the year of 2021. The motion is that the bylaw cited as the permissive tax exemption bylaw 2021, number 3136, be read a final time. Any discussion on that? Um, mover and a seconder, Councillor Stortaboom, Councillor Bahal. Any further discussion? Go ahead, Councillor Stortaboom. Did you have a I'm comment? not sure it's final reading if we could really say anything, but you know my comments around this and uh, how disappointed I am that council hasn't supported the Langley Food Bank this year. I hope that council will come to uh, appreciate the food bank and provide the permissive tax exemption for next year. As such, I won't vote against this bylaw because of the good that it does for others. But in the future, I would expect some special consideration for this situation that is unique in our city and all of the region by not supporting our local food bank. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sturdivant. Councillor Albrecht, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And and uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, respond to Councillor Sturdivant's uh, comments. It's I'm looking forward uh, to working with staff on an update of our 
of our policy and procedure for the permissive uh, tax uh, exemption uh, to uh, incorporate a more uh, fair and equitable formula throughout uh, our community. Um, this isn't uh, a matter of of not supporting one or another. It's a matter of getting fair uh, representation and support. And I think we heard loud and clear that there's a lot of uh, community support out there for the food bank. And uh, it's just a matter of, uh, there's only so many dollars and we need to have a, a fair, balanced and equitable approach to applying uh, those uh, types of benefits uh, to these various organizations that provide vital services to our community. So I'm looking forward to that coming forward to us in the near future. Thank you. Great, thank you. Councillor Martin. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I, I will echo what uh, Councillor Albrecht said, but I, I do take a <clears throat> exception to the comment by Councillor Rudy, uh, Rudy Stortebrun that <laughs> he hopes Council comes to appreciate the food bank. I think we all appreciate the food bank. Um, it's just everything that uh, Councillor Albrecht said. Uh, and under the suggestion of Council, we're going to look at a fairer way to distribute this money. And uh, hopefully in the future, uh, we'll be able to do that. But to suggest that council doesn't appreciate the food bank, I think is, is not uh, in keeping with the way how council feels. So uh, as I say, I do echo everything that Councillor Albrecht says and, and look forward to um, some kind of a new policy on, on these. Thank you. Great, thank you all. Um, Councillor Wallace. Thank you. Um, thank you for the comments, everybody. And I, I agree. With, I agree with what everybody's saying. And I, I, I disagree that council doesn't um, think that the, the food bank is worthy. Um, there's a lot of worthy causes out there. But in the time of COVID, one of the the, the hardest things is food security. And um, I just, for me, maybe it's just the time that we're in. Um, it would have been nice to have supported the food bank and. Um, to Councillor Albrecht's um, comments, yes, I'm, I look forward to um, reevaluating how we give our tax exemptions. I think that we were put in a predicament um, in the last meeting, and I think that we're trying to do the best we can as a collective. Um, but I, you know, I, I was disappointed that it didn't didn't go go um, forward. But uh, here we are, and I, I know that the community will we'll have to work even harder to support the food bank. Thank you. Great, thank you for your comments. Councillor Sturdivant. I just briefly to say, I look forward to seeing action on this file rather than just words. Thank you very much. Great, well, thank you all for your comments and uh, yeah, it'll be good to go forward with uh, staff reviewing this new policy um, or a newer policy to add on to it. Um, I thought the old policy was very clear and that we follow the community charter and help our citizens. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to some further discussion on this and I'm also disappointed it didn't go through. But uh, if anybody else has anything other to say, I don't see anyone else. So I will call the vote, all those in favor, any opposed, and that carries. And on to committee reports. Uh, Environmental Task Group October 8, 2020 meeting report. Councillor Wallace, is, I believe you were the chair of that task force and you would like to speak to this, correct? Thank you. And uh, yeah. you know, Councillor Albrecht is the uh, vice chair, so you can back me up on anything there, Councillor Albrecht. Um, the recommendation, so we're bringing a recommendation forward. Um, the Environmental Task Group recommends that council direct staff to complete a report converting waste, converting waste management for events within city of Langley, including the following. How event waste management is currently addressed. Summarize, um, summarize the typical events held within the city of Langley. How waste at events can be reduced. What waste reduction education resources should be provided at events. Should the city implement a requirement that event organizers must submit a waste management plan prior to the event approval? Identify the components of, of a suggested waste management plan. Identify implications to event organizers. Estimate the cost and resource implications for, for city organized events. Um, can I go on to, to say the, pur the purpose of the report 
is to brief council on a recent meeting of the environmental task group and recommend staff complete a report to review and make improvements to event waste management. Great. Oh, Councillor Albrecht, do you want to second that motion? Uh, you bet I will. Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, any discussion on this? Uh, I have Councillor Pahal and then I'll get back to you, Councillor Albrecht, unless it's to do with the actual information. Okay, so I'll go with uh, Councillor Pahal first. Uh, thank you, Mayor Van Yenbrook. And uh, yes, this is definitely something that I support. And I know it's been something that we've been talking about in various forms for several years. Since it looks like there's not going to be a lot of in-person events next year, this might actually be an ideal opportunity to review where we are so we can start planning for 2022. So I look forward to seeing uh, what staff come back with if this is approved. Great comments. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Albrecht, go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. And, and that's, that's exactly what... Uh, the environment committee was talking about we we you know talk is cheap and and it's time to start uh, walking the talk and it's time to start uh, looking very seriously about how we uh, we do uh, proper waste management uh, at our events we're having more events they're getting bigger they're more popular and we see the cleanup efforts afterwards so it's nice to be able to do something um, that uh, is significant in terms of uh, climate action and taking a leadership role in how things can be done. I know other communities are doing similar things and that's why this came up through the committee. And uh, at this point in time, it's exploratory. It's uh, some staff time putting together some information and uh, maybe doing a poll of other communities to find out best practices, uh, what can be done, what the, will the challenges will be, and of course, what kind of dollars will be attached to that. So uh, I think it's time uh, that we, uh, like I say, show a little bit more leadership on, on these types of things for events in our community. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Yeah, I agree 100%. And this is a great motion. There's lots of information. You guys did a wonderful job researching this and being very, oh, I don't wanna say specific, but it's, it's very good. Um, good job by you and your committee. So uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, um, thank you for that last comment, um, Mayor Val. It's it was um, it was a lengthy conversation. It was a few few meetings in the making, and um, I feel very fortunate to have um, the members that sit on our task group and the partner groups. Um, we really, you know, we really get we we really investigate um, what different uh, municipalities are doing and. Um, you know, LEPS has done a lot of their own initiatives and they continue to do within our, in our communities. So yeah, I just want to um, give kudos to our committee with, with the hard work that they do. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Okay, any other comments or discussions? I'll call the vote on this. All those in favor? Any opposed? Okay, that carries. Wonderful. Thank you both for bringing that forward. Okay, so we are on to new and unfinished business. Uh, motion to hold a uh, closed meeting. Sorry, I've got a little spill to read, so please just bear with me. Motions and notices of motions. Motion to hold a closed meeting. That the council meeting immediately following this meeting be closed to the public as a subject matter being considered relates to items which comply with the following closed meeting criteria specified in section 90 of the community charter. One, a part of, the count of a council meeting may be closed to the public if the subject matter being considered relates to or is one or more of the following. F, law enforcement, if the council considers that disclosure could reasonably be expected to harm the conduct of an investigation under or enforcement of an, 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 of an enactment. Try saying that fast 10 times. K, negotiations and related discussions respecting the proposed provision of a municipal service that are at their prelim preliminary stages and that in view of the council could reasonably be expected to harm the interests of the municipality if they were held in public. I, the receipt of advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose. 
J, information that is prohibited or information that if it were presented in a document would be prohibited from disclosure under Section 21 of the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. Any discussion on that? I have to ask. Okay, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. Um, um, Madam Mayor, who was the mover and seconder? Sorry. Um, I believe it was Councillor Storteboom and Councillor Albrecht or Rosemary. It was somebody in my top right thank, hand corner. Thank you. That, sorry. Okay. Um, now I do have here. I have correspondence and new business, and I don't believe we have any of that. Is that correct, Kelly? Uh, that is correct, okay. Madam Mayor. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm just uh, going over this. Okay, so adjournment motion that the meeting uh, adjourn. All those in favor, any opposed? Okay, and Kelly, you can turn off the recording now. Thank you.